Good morning to you. Trust you are well today. Today I've realized, I found out, thank you to Facebook Memories, that this book, Wait, Pray, Listen, is six years old. It was today, six years ago, that I picked up my first printed copy. And this is the first book I've read, I ever wrote. And so I remember how it felt just knowing that all my thoughts, things that God had given me to put in my heart, that God had helped me to put this book down on paper. And here I was holding this thing. So I thought, what better way to celebrate six years ago? We had a book launch. It was amazing. Today, this book is still, still my best selling book. And I remember I, I spent evenings sitting here in my study um, writing just I was trying to watch TV with Rory many times and um, these thoughts were just coming to me because I was in in writing mode I call it writing mode I was in listening and receiving mode and so I remember having to say Rory I've just got to go and get my laptop out and I would write some more things down just to keep note of what God was saying to me to put in this book and so today I've just been flipping through it um, I, I preach many of my messages still to this day, uh, not all of them, but some of them still come from this book, like the woman with the issue of blood and dreaming big with God and all of these things. And it's all about finding the goodness of God. So I just want to look at a few things here. This is not a sales pitch. This is to encourage you that God is moving today. And as I look through this book, I see he was speaking to me back then six years ago. Um, there's a page that says, Our true spiritual identity is in heavenly places in Christ. God will speak that identity over us through His Word or a prophetic word and invite us to become who He says we already are. He always wants to show us how He sees us. And most times it's not how we see ourselves. I think all of the time God always says things. We don't see ourselves the way God sees us and He speaks to us. As though we are the people he already says we are. That's what he did with Gideon. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. And, and all the other people in the Bible you can think of who God spoke to, Moses. You know, you can do this. And Moses was saying, but I can't. And he always spoke to people who felt that they were inadequate. They were the least in their family. They couldn't do it. They couldn't speak. And, and that's because God sees our true spiritual identity long before we even come to grips with who we are in Christ. And um, let me read this. When we feel hopeless, he wants to speak hope to us. When we feel inadequate, he does what he can to let us know that we can do it. It's not because we're so great. It's because he is. And then my favorite, well, I think the whole book is my favorite. But my favorite, I'll say one of the favorite chapters in here is chapter 15 where I speak about my king-sized bedroom, the dream that I had. And, um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of you know already that I dream a lot. God speaks to me in dreams. But in this dream, um, my king-sized bedroom, I'll read it to you. Um, uh, many years ago, I dreamed that Rory and I were being shown around a house that had been given to us as a gift. I never saw the person taking us around, but I knew this was the Holy Spirit. I had the Holy Spirit guiding us, taking us on a tour of this house that we were given. And, and the, the whole thing about it was a house in Paris, um, you know, the, the typical dream house that we all want in Paris, overlooking an, a very busy street. Um, it overlooked the busiest street in Paris. There was a balcony. Um, and then... And then the Holy Spirit said to me, you can choose to stand on this balcony and watch parades coming past. All the famous people will come past. Or you can choose to close these doors, go inside. And here was this king size bedroom. And in the dream, God spoke to me about the importance of intimacy with him. How we can see all the goings on around us. We can stand out there and, and watch the famous people and hear what well-known people are saying, even though those things are right. But when we choose to close those doors and we come into the secret place with God, we get to know him in this intimate place. Then he gives us revelation that belongs to us. And it's, it was so amazing. So um, I say here, the bedroom speaks of intimacy. This is the place where you get to know who you share your bedroom with. 
I could choose to remain there in intimacy or stand out on the balcony and see who was famous and what they were doing or saying. Um, I have never forgotten that dream or that invitation. I'm not saying I have it all worked out. The grace of God and the wooing of the Spirit work together to keep me listening and leaning so that I can continually learn how to use the gifts I've been given. I'm still learning. Intimacy with God is where we learn to hear His heartbeat and we know how to pray. This place is where the greatest dreams and visions are conceived. It's not enough to just know the Word of God. I want to know the God of the Word. And so just flipping through this Bible, victim mentality versus this Bible, this book, victim mentality versus royalty mentality. And then I speak about the goodness of God revelation that God gave me many years ago, that he is good all the time. Um, he doesn't want us to suffer or go through hard times to learn things about him. He is good. And so um, I w I'm encouraging myself today about the things that I wrote in here. Um, there's some testimonies in here about how God spoke to me. Um, there was one that always encourages me. We were in, in another country. I think we were in Perth, Australia. And we were about to go and minister that evening with another speaker who was at the conference. And um, when it came time to ministry time, we were going to flow together. All three of us were going to flow together and minister to people. And I got up onto the stage next to Rory and this other amazing prophet of God. Um, and I stood next to the two of them and they were just flowing in words of knowledge. And as I stood there, there was nothing. Go, I had nothing. And, um, and then I remembered that that afternoon, um, I, I actually, I'm telling you the story back to front. Before we came to the meeting um, that afternoon, I had put my head down, intending to have a power nap, a five, ten minute nap. And when my head hit the pillow and I saw in a vision, I saw a lady sitting in a certain seat in the hall and what she was wearing. And God said, I'm going to heal her. And so when I got to the meeting, I looked around and I didn't see, I saw a lady, a blonde lady sitting in the seat, but she wasn't wearing what I had seen in that vision. And so I thought I must have missed it. So when I was standing up on the stage with Rory and, and the other person, um, they were flowing and I was getting absolutely nothing. And God often does this with me when he's shown me something, if I don't step out in faith, he waits for me to step out in faith before he gives me anything else. And so um, I stood there and I said, Lord, but I saw this vision, but the lady's not there. And then when I looked across into that section of the hall again, the lady's daughter had come to sit on her lap and she had the, a shawl that was the color that I had seen in my vision. And I knew this little girl had taken the shawl off and gone off somewhere else. And when she returned and sat on her mother's lap, there she was wearing the shawl. And then I had the faith and I called her forward. And as she walked towards me, I said, God's going to heal your right hip. And I heard myself say this and I thought, oh, wow, you, you've either hit the nail on the head or you've missed it big time. But the lady obviously identified with it. And before she got to the front, she fell on the floor in the aisle and God healed her right hip. And I, I, I remember these stories, just flipping through these stories. And when you hear stories like this, when you have your own stories and you feel that you're in a dry patch, maybe this is my encouragement to you today. This book, Wait, Pray, Listen, is about the adventurous things God wants us to walk through and live with him because he is good. We find out that his abundant life is full of adventure and excitement. It's not boring. And, um, and when, when you hear other people share, like my testimony today, and you think, but I haven't ever experienced anything like that. Or maybe you have, but it's been a long time. This is meant to encourage you to begin to expect those things again. Be listening expectantly. Never forget that this, this life God has for you is adventurously expectant. The, the opening page here, it still says first print, but the opening page here says, when we understand that God is good, and wants to display his glory through us, we see, hear, and live adventurously and expectantly. So that's what I want to encourage you with today. If you've got this book, pick it up again and read it. Um, and get encouraged that these are the days to live adventurously and expectantly because we're co-laboring with God. No matter how dark the world gets, 
we are still working together. God wants us to partner with Him because the life that we live is adventurously expectant. So be encouraged with that today.